from the Streamline Sail Arena at the Jenkins Fieldhouse on the campus of Florida Southern College in Lakeland, Florida. Welcome to the final quarterfinal game of the 2019 NCAA Division II Women's South Regional Basketball Tournament. Tonight, it will be the Gulf South Conference Tournament champions, the Lee Flames from Cleveland, Tennessee, as they will take on the University of Tampa Spartans from the Sunshine State Conference. Hello again, everyone. I'm Jim Henderson. My broadcast partner is former University of Tampa assistant coach Lisa Beamer. And you also said earlier today that you had a daughter who played at Lee. So tell everybody what you did here. <laughs> yeah, I'm a little bit torn because I used to coach at the University of Tampa and my daughter played volleyball for Lee University and she graduated two years ago. So I brought my two shirts. I hung them up here by our booth. I got my Lee shirt. I got my University of Tampa jersey. So maybe, you know, you can wear one or I'll just. Oh, uh, no, 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 no. <laughs> I'm, I'm totally neutral here. <laughs> you got to be I'm neutral. Not, not so right. I'll wear one one quarter and one the next quarter. How oh, about great, that? <laughs> great, great. Well, it should be a good game. Tampa is 21-8 and eight overall. They are the five seed here in the tournament. Lee, 25-6 and six overall. They are the number four seed here in the tournament. And usually, Lisa, the 4-5 game is an extremely good one. We've had, in our three games so far today, we've had one good one, and the other two have been have been kind of, not blowouts per se, but somewhat that way. And I just suspect that this is going to be a pretty good game. Oh, I think this is going to be a really good game. You know, we talked about some of those other games where they were missing some key pieces to their yep. teams. Yep. There's no key pieces missing here today. So you've got number four and number five, Lee and Tampa, going at each other. UT is 21 and 8, 15 and 5 in the conference. Lee is 25 and 6, 16 and 4 in their conference. And there's a little bit of a difference here though because Tampa lost to Rollins in the quarterfinals, 56-45. Mm -hmm. So they've been off for a while. And then now you look at Lee, Lee beat Valdosta State in the championship game 81-73. And Abby Bertram was the tournament MVP with 19 points and nine boards. Well, she and, and of course, Lee played Florida Southern earlier this year here in the Gulf South Sunshine State Conference Challenge. The Mox beat them by six. This is a really good team. It was their first Gulf South Conference championship ever, mm -hmm. and they earned it because they knocked off a, a Valdosta State team. And it kind of worked out in their favor in a sense because both West Florida and Union lost mm -hmm. in tournament play. They knocked off Union twice during the regular season. Mm -hmm. And, of course, Union lost here earlier tonight to Nova Southeastern in the only upset we have had so far. So, yeah, I'm not sure what to expect in this one. I know Tampa very disappointed with a loss to Rollins in the Absolutely. conference tournament. And they had previously lost to a pretty average Lynn team and only scored 45 right. points in that one. So it looks like the Spartans have had some problems putting the ball in the basket of late. Well, and the thing is, too, out of all the times that these two teams have come head-to-head, -head, Lee holds a 3-2 to two advantage over UT. And I did talk to Coach Rowe, and he said that they feel they're playing their really good bat – really – like their best basketball right now and he said and this weekend should be a lot of fun so when the coach is telling you that <laughs> the players are probably feeling like that as well well we mentioned abby bertram on tampa side stasia tighter first team all ssc this year sixth in the league in scoring third in rebounding at 8.7 third in field goal percentage she is really the the leader and the heart and soul of this tampa team well she's a 5'8 senior that came from georgia state college Scored 14.3 points a game, 8.3 rebounds, and she's a local product here. She's right from near Orlando, and she was a runner-up for Miss Florida basketball in 8A. Well, she is one of five starters for the Spartans. There you see the starters. Julia McClure, 5'8", senior out of Secaucus, New Jersey, a transfer out of Wagner College in the starting lineup, along with Chris Nelson, a 5'4", junior out of Augusta, Georgia, and a transfer from Temple University. Dory Nudge is a 6'2 sophomore, the Sunshine State Conference Newcomer of the Year. She is a transfer from the University of South Florida, having an outstanding year. And the final starter, Emily Ashu, a 5'9 senior out of Naperville, Illinois, and a transfer from Bradley University. That is the starting lineup for Tampa. Head coach by Tom Jesse, his 17th year. Coach Jesse, 341 and 163 overall for the Lee Flames. Their starters include Lindsey Roddy, a 5'7 junior out of Maryville, Tennessee. She's averaging 8.3 points, four rebounds per game. Abby Bertram, we mentioned her, the 5'9 junior out of Kingston, Tennessee. She is averaging 14.5 points, 3.8 rebounds per game. 
Nikki Wadinski, also a starter, averaging 6.2 points, 3.5 rebounds, a junior out of Oak Creek, Wisconsin. Haley Schubert having an outstanding year, 5'6 freshman out of Knoxville. She's averaging 12.1 points per game. And Taylor Bodges, a 5'8 junior out of Makes County, Tennessee, averaging 8.1 points per game. That's the starting lineup for the Lee Flames, head coach in his 15th year by Marty Rowe. Rowe needs three wins to reach the 400 plateau. He's 397 to 101. As a 20-year head coach in women's college basketball, he's got 528 wins and 166 losses. Those, those are really incredible records. Well, you got two really good coaches here that have great, great records. So one of the things that we did talk about beforehand was when we looked at the University of Tampa roster, the UT roster has a whole lot of transfers on there. Yeah. When we look at the Lee roster, he's got a lot of kids that stay there and play there four years. Yep, yeah, you're right. And in fact, I would say of all the teams in the tournament, they are the one that is that most closely does that i mean these kids you don't you don't look and see a lot of transfers on this team in fact as i look through the roster i see a transfer from shorter i see a transfer from reinhardt university and i think that's just about it yeah and basically the starting five for ut we got a georgia state college transfer a temple college usf bradley and wagner all five our referee today is terry tubbs he'll work with sharika brown and ray lewis and our game just about ready to get underway. The white clad Lee will go right to left. Tampa in the visiting Spartan Red here. Should be a good one. Sit back, relax, and enjoy this final game here tonight in the quarterfinals of the 2019 South Regional Women's Tournament. Tampa with the opening tip, and we are underway. Spartans, as we mentioned, 21 and 8 overall. First layup is a foul called inside, and the Spartans will get some early free throws here. That's a pretty early foul, only 10 seconds into the game. So free throws coming up here for Chris Nelson. She averages 4.7 points per game. Chance for the Spartans to get the early lead here. She is an 80% free throw shooter as well. First free throw and the first points of the game belong to Chris Nelson and the University of Tampa Spartans. Let's see, they have, they have not posted the foul here That's on what, Lee. I was waiting on that, too, to see who that was on. Second free throw coming up, and it will be a little long, but a rebound comes down to tighter for Tampa. It gets knocked out of bounds, and it will come back to Lee. Foul was on Haley Schubert, as a matter of fact. Yeah, I see they posted it now. So, first possession coming up here for Lee. And bringing it up will be Abby Bertram. Again, she's the Gulf South Conference Tournament MVP. She'll give it up here. Moving it around. That was Bogus. Now, this is Bertram again. Bertram missed the shot. Rebound comes down to Titer. She's good at that for the Spartans, and they'll bring it up. Back out on top for Nelson, running the point. Right wing pass back outside from a shoe. Trying to move inside is Nudge. Nodge reverse nice. layup is good. Dory Nodge, her first basket and an early 3-0 lead for the Spartans. Well, Nodge is from Hungary. She's a transfer from USF. She averages 13.6 points a game and nine rebounds a game. Tremendous up and under move there on a reverse layup. Big three off the glass and in. That is by, it looked like it was by Bodges. Well, they had her listed as three earlier, and now they changed it to 23. And I'll tell you why they changed it to 23. Now we got a foul, it looks like, <laughs> inside here. I and talked to Coach before the game, and, oh, here's the shot. The foul was called on that last play on Widensky. And that's what threw us off because we have her down as number three, but yep. she's actually wearing a 23, and that's because... The jersey was left back at the hotel. <laughs> okay. Well, that happens once in a while. Lee back the other way in a tie game. Flames driving in, and the ball goes out of bounds, a turnover for Lee. So a little bit of sloppy play here in the early going. And the Spartans will bring it up with Nelson at the point. Nelson out of Augusta, Georgia. Nice little move. Back out it comes for Titer. 
She is the heart and soul, and right there you see why. Her first basket of the game, and the Spartans go up two. Nice curl right off that top pick and just took it right to the hole with a nice left-handed layup. Trying to work it around is Lee, and that was Schubert. She's had an excellent year. She fires up the shot, not going to go. Rebound comes down to Titer. Titer really busy on the boards already. That's her third. She's going in. She'll get another one, and she'll score. How about Stasia Titer? Four points for her, and the Spartans go up four. Well, she is the heart and soul, as you said, of that UT program, and Lee is going to have to find a way to stop her in this game. Good defense, that Lee will back it out here. I did talk to Tom Jesse before the game, and he talks about how well Lee runs their offense. And that's going to be a travel. Sure is a travel. Will be called on the flame substitution right away for Lee as Kayla Tilly coming in. She averages 6.1 off the bench. Well, Schubert there just kind of got caught in the air, you know, wanted to go up and then kind of changed her mind and wasn't anyone to pass to and got called for the travel call on that. Looks like Schubert and Roddy both came out here. Trying to go inside now. They're going to dump it back out to tighter down low. That's going to be stolen by the Flames. Flames and on the move here in transition with Bertram. Bertram going up and will not get it in to go. And the rebound taken down by Dory Nodge. Great rebound and box out by Nodge there. So Nelson in front court, a four-point Spartan lead here early on. Final game of the day. Winner will play Florida Southern tomorrow night at 7.30. This is Nelson fake the three. Kicks it back out. Shot clock a factor here. Pick and roll with Naj. There you go. And that will be an Saw easy layup coming. for Tampa. And that will be four for Naj and a six-point lead here for the Spartans. Had a guard to big switch on that. And UT recognized that right away and got an easy two for Naj. So the Spartans off and running four of five from the floor so far here. And again, this team only had 45 points in each of his last two games. Offensive foul called here on Abby Bertram. She'll pick up her first foul. That's three quick fouls here on the Flames. And boy, all of a sudden, it is not going well for the Gulf, the Gulf South Conference Tournament champions. Well, I definitely think that Lee's pressing a little bit. They just need to relax and run their offense the way they know how to do it. Becca Cheeks in for Nikki Widinski now for Lee. And Nelson in front court for the Spartans. Giving it up. This is a shoe. Another pick and, and roll. Yep, this time it's an offensive foul going to go against Tampa. And they're going to get tighter for her first foul in the game. And she's one, Lisa, that they can ill afford to have out of the game. We see Tom Jesse right there. I don't think he's real happy with that call. Well, but that was a moving screen. I know he's giving the ref a hard time, but, but tighter did not stay put when she went to do the roll on that screen. Spartans by six. Flames trying to move it around a little bit. Down low, wide open, and a missed layup inside, but it comes back out. Getting the rebound there was Tilly until he kicks it back out for Bertram. Now on top it comes for Cheeks. This is Bertram for three. That's going to go off the iron, and we got a foul, and it's going to stay here, it looks like. Or let's check that. Nope. I think they pointed the other direction. Going the other way. Yep. So let's see who they call this one on. Spartans will have it. Lee will pick up its fourth foul here already in the first quarter. We're not halfway home, and now we got a whistle, and I think they're trying to figure out exactly who it was. They still have the last foul by Bertram posted here. So well, let's I see think what they're it, calling it uh, on they Bertram They are going to call it. Yeah, they are. That's a big foul. Yes, it is. Huge foul, two on Bertram right now. And I think we are going to have our first media timeout. A good start here for the University of Tampa Spartans. They've got a six-point lead here, and you're watching the quarterfinals of the 2019 NCAA Division II Women's South Regional Tournament right here on the Sunshine State Conference Digital Network. From court to court and lane to lane under the lights or under the sun, no one delivers Division II sports like NCAA.com. The center of D2 is inside the NCAA.com hub with exclusive highlights of every sport and live broadcasts of every Division II championship found nowhere else. Make NCAA.com yours. The home of Division II. 
Well, Lisa, you said that that team in white there, the Leaf Flames, need to relax a little bit. Their shooting percentage only one of six so far, and they're also getting beat on the boards by Tampa, five to two, tighter with three of those rebounds. Well, and not only that, we're looking at the fact that Bertram just picked up her second yeah, foul. Yeah, huge. And there's 540 left in the first period. That is going to be a tough thing for Lee to have to deal with. Well, they're having some sort of discussion down at the scorer's table. Marty Rowe from Lee wants to know what that is. Uh, I think we're ready to go. Spartans with a six-point lead here as we approach the halfway mark of the first quarter. The inbounds pass will be by Titer to Nelson, and here come the Spartans up six. Bertram remaining in the game with two fouls. Nelson blows right by her, shot up and in. Nice. Spartans will score again to go up by eight. That's Julia McClure's first basket of the game. And Julia McClure, 5'8", senior transfer from Wagner College. Three-pointer goes off, and boy, the Spartans almost knocked each other out of bounds. <laughs> and Nelson will bring it back up off the miss there by Tilly. This is a shoe with it. And tighter. Tider trying to go up, and she's going to be called for traveling. Good defense that time by the Flames. Nice job by Flames. They closed in, double teamed her, and she had nowhere to go. So it's substitution. And let's see who is coming in and out. Haley Schubert's back in, and sitting down will be Taylor Bodges. And they put Bertram back in. It should be interesting. She's got two fouls. She's got to be very, very careful. Flames ball. Wide open jumper. That will go. That is Bertram's first basket of the game. And it's a six-point Spartan lead. Now, if Tampa's smart, look who Bertram is guarding. She's guarding tighter. I would go right there. The shoe on the long cross quarter. Open three. Going to come up a little short. And the rebound. Comes down there to Tilly, and the Flames back the other way, down six. Schubert dumps it down into the block, goes up, missed the shot. Who's going to get a rebound? Saved in there by Lee. Takes the three. That'll go. And that is Abby Bertram's first three of the game, and all of a sudden, it's now a three-point Spartan lead. Number 74 in three-point baskets this year by Abby Bertram. Well, Bertram just hit... The next five points there came right in the game. We were worried she had fouls, and she just drained a three and had a two right before that. Jumper by a shoe. There's a whistle. That's not going to count. It's going to go against Tampa. Let's see who they get for the foul. We got a substitution coming back in as Lindsey Roddy, and we are going to have a timeout on the floor. One final look here before we step aside or... Well, we'll go ahead and just stay Bertram, here with it. And Bertram with the three right there. Came right off of that curl, had a three wide open. Well, the Spartans five of seven from the floor right now, while Lee only three of ten. But Lee's starting to show a little bit of sign of life here. Well, and they're going to have to get on it because they started out so, so slow. I mean, they're, they're, they were one for six at the beginning of the game. So now they put Bertram back in. She's kind of getting him into the flow of the game. And right now we're looking at University of Tampa with Titer being a first team all Sunshine State Conference, third in rebounding. She is their go-to player, as well as Abby Bertram for Lee, third in the Gulf South for three-point field goals and over 1,109 career points. And like we talked about, she was the Gulf South Tournament MVP. And look at this program for Lee, 20-plus wins for the past 15 seasons. They don't rebuild, they reload. Third straight South Regional Tournament appearance, and I know that Coming into this game, I know Marty Rowe and his club thought this might be the team, and it still might be, but they're having a little bit of a rough start so far here in this one. Well, he did tell me with what they lost last year, he wasn't thinking that they were going to be this far ahead that they are okay. right now in the season, and he's very happy with what's been going on so far during this season. And he has won the region or conference coach of the year 11 times throughout his career. So that says a lot about what he does there on the sideline. Yeah, no doubt about it. Well, here comes Schubert with it. And she'll kick it back now for Cheeks. Schubert again takes the jumper. Schubert nails it. That'll be a two. She's averaging 12.1, her first basket, and now the Spartan lead down to one. Well, Schubert was the reason why they got into that championship game against Valdosta State. She had 21 second-half points against West Georgia. 
Nelson gives it up, or Nelson gets it back, and we got a traveling violation called. Chris Nelson wonder where that happened. She just, she just, she's basically just caught the ball. It didn't look like she moved. I didn't see any fancy footwork there myself. So Lee coming up with a chance to take the lead. Bertram gives it up for Schubert. Now Roddy, and trying to make a move with it there is Hughes. Deep three will go in and out, and it will go out of bounds. It's going to stay with Lee. So a chance for the Flames once again to get a fresh 30 and a chance to go ahead. Lobbing back out, comes out for Hughes, Haley Hughes. Now this is Bertram. Saw a screen, kicked it into the corner. This is Hughes again, or rather now Schubert gets it. Yeah, there's the Schubert shot, comes up short. Rebound comes down to Nelson. And the Spartans bring it back the other way, up one. This is Nelson again, faked the shot. Looking for Naj down inside. Lobbed it down, Naj. Better get Three out seconds. of the lane. Yep, I was just thinking that she had to get out of the lane pretty quickly. Some subs coming in here. The Widinski coming back in and Tori Lentz in for the first time for Lee. Sitting down, it looks like will be Schubert and also Haley Hughes. So an inbounds pass coming up, and Abby Bertram will bring it up, and once again, Lee with a chance to take the lead. Schubert gives up the pass. Roddy, and a traveling violation call. Boy, nobody seems to want to take the lead in this thing, <laughs> or at least don't want to get past 11 to 10, which we've been stuck on for a while. That's what that's the travel on Widinski. Turnovers in the game, seven turnovers already for the Spartans, only four for Lee, offensive. and we got an offensive foul. Wow. This is going interestingly now as Nelson gets her first foul. That will be the third foul here in the quarter on the Spartans. Well, obviously the players better get the message because the refs are calling it a little bit tighter than yep. it's been called in the last several games that we've watched. Here's Bertram giving it up again. This time with it is Lentz. Deep three. Bertram comes up just a little short, but a rebound comes down for the Flames. And once again, Lee with a chance to get past 11-10. Let's see if that can happen. Schubert gives it up. She gets it back. She missed it. Rebound Nelson. Here come the Spartans. And she's going to go all the way down. Layup is up and no good. <laughs> Rebound comes right back down to Tori Lentz. And, boy, we are going end to end here. Bertram. And both, and both teams have had good looks at the basket. Yep. They're just not putting them in right now. Well, Tampa's, Tampa's now 5 of 8 and Lee 4 of 15. Think about the difference in shots. This is Roddy now giving it up. Trying to go with Widinski now. The deep three by Bertram. That's off. We could see that one from here. And Titer gets another rebounder. Fifth in the game for Tampa. So the Spartans still. We are stuck on 11-10. And we're coming up on a minute 20 to go here in the quarter. All the way in. Easy layup for Nelson who will score for the Spartans. Come right Nelson off. with three, and the Spartans Very lead it nice. by three. Came right off of that pick with Naj. I thought maybe they were going to look for a pick and roll, but they didn't switch. She went right around the pick and went right in for an easy two. Here's Bertram. She's clearing people out. Wants to go in. Nice spin move. Left-handed shot doesn't go. Tighter with another rebound. She'll bring it up. Dumped it off to a shoe. And here's Tighter again. Tighter going through the lane. Another layup. Boy, what a move. Stasia Tighter's got six. It's a five-point Spartan lead, less than a minute to go in the quarter. Somebody better sit on that left hand because she's shown that that's where her favorite shot is, is going to the lane and taking it to the left. Roddy gets it back. And we got a hand check foul on Tighter. And that'll be two on her, and that's not what the Spartans need. No, actually, so now you got Titer with two, and you have Bertram with two. Two of the better players from both teams that are now have two fouls before the end of the first quarter. Malia Sullivan coming in for Tampa. Lauren Cote coming in. Looks like Schubert checks back in here now for Lee. Final seconds of the first quarter. Trying to go through. Shot blocked out of bounds. It's going to stay with Lee. Shot was missed there by Bodges. Spartans with a five-point lead here in quarter number one of game number four here in the quarterfinals today. Now on the Streamline Sail Arena floor inside the Jenkins Fieldhouse here at Florida Southern College. 
All the way back out for Lee. This is Widinski. Gives it up now for Bertram. She's probably going to hold it. She Last says, shot. I think I'll take it. <laughs> Absolutely. So let's see what she wants to do. See if they don't have a pick and roll situation with Bertram here. Bertram, little runner, kissed it right in. Nice shot by Abby Bertram. She's got seven. Tampa maybe with, nope, I was going to say with one final chance, but they will not get it. And we have come to the end of the first quarter here tonight at the Streamline Sale Arena. The Spartans lead it by three over Lee in the 4-5 game. Don't go away. You're watching the quarterfinals of the 2019 NCAA Division II Women's South Regional Tournament right here on the Sunshine State Conference Digital Network. I was told the place I was looking for didn't exist. A place that could refine my raw talents into something greater. Where I could ask big questions about my faith, not settling for easy answers. And I could risk what's comfortable in pursuit of my dream. To join with others, find my voice, and change the world. I was told that place didn't exist. Then I found Lee. Welcome back. Here we are in Lakeland with the highlight. All the way to the bucket. And that was, who was that? That, that was, was Chris Nelson. Nelson. Great job. 5'4 junior guard from Temple College taking it to the basket. And do you know she's related to O.J. Simpson? Really? That was in their program. Yeah. I actually interviewed O.J. Simpson. Did you really? As a reporter for the Tampa Tribune back when he was an NFL player. Wow. Yeah. He Comes was very, full circle now. He was very nice. But it, it was after an exhibition game, and I my job was going to get him and Joe Namath. Namath told me to you know what off. Wow. Yes, and uh, but Simpson sat down and talked to me. Well, I've heard he's Who would very, have ever thought? <laughs> I, hey, I've heard he's a great guy, very yeah. charismatic. Yeah, you know? he was. <laughs> he was. Back the other way it comes now for Lee, and this is Tilly. Tilly gives it up. Open three, and that's just in and out. Rebound for the Spartans off the miss there by Tilly. And now here is Nelson back for the University of Tampa. Spartans lead it by three. Second quarter just underway. Tampa now 7 of 10 from the floor, still shooting the ball very well. Lee only 5 of 19. McClure gives it up. This is Nelson down nice low. Pass. And a travel violation going to be oh, called nice pass on Lauren by Cote. Very nice pass by Nelson. She's doing a great job running the offense right now, being the floor general for the University of Tampa. Lee back the other way. Can tie it with a 3. Here Schubert gives it up. Back out on top for Roddy. Trying to go now. With it is Widinski, and now she gives it up. That's Roddy. No, it's going to be kicked all the way out. Lee can't save it. Tampa's going to get it back. One minute into the quarter number two. It's a three-point lead here for the visitors from the University of Tampa. Spartans fifth seed. And, you know, I thought, Lisa, that with the loss to Rollins, I thought they might drop a little bit in the uh, – tournament rankings here instead of being fifth I thought they might drop to either sixth or seventh but they had a good overall year and that's why they're fifth well they finished 15 and 5 in the conference and 21 and 8 so possible power rankings might have helped yep. them out a little bit yeah no doubt well here is Nelson what a move inside Nelson with a reverse Chris Nelson now at five and the Spartans go up five here against Lee Chris Nelson has already been past her average she only averages 4.7 points a game and she is really putting it on Lee tonight down inside for Roddy kicked it back out little jumper off the glass and in nice shot there by Kayla Tilly her first basket and the lead for the Spartans dwindles to three long way to go just underway here in the second quarter. Abby Bertram coming right back here for Lee. Ball deflected away. Gathered in by the Spartans. This McClure. McClure going all the way up. She will not get it to go. Got her own rebound. And the Spartans get a fresh 30. And Chris Nelson pulls it out. Sets the offense up. Here is a shoe. Travel. And she'll be called for a travel. Emily Ashu is a Google Cloud Academic All-American just like Anya Fuse Robiton for the mocks. Let's see what happens on this one. Really nice kiss off the glass. Excellent, excellent job. So Tilly will inbound it. And Bertram, who just came back in, will bring it up. 
Spartans by three. Bertram gives it up. Tilly down low, trying to penetrate in his cheek. She'll do it. And now the Spartan lead is one. Really nice post entry pass by Tilly that time. Lee taking advantage of a little bit of a height differential there down in the post. Nelson again gives it back out for Tampa. This is Ingram driving in, layup up by Nodge will go. She's got six and the Spartans lead goes back to three. That's a great move for a 6-2 post player from the top of the key, taking it all the way to the rim. Great pass inside, but the shot is missed in there by Cheeks. Second chance by Lee and there, Bertram rather, and that was a miss. And here comes Nelson the other way. Nelson all the way to the hole will score. How about Chris Nelson, who's got seven, Chris. and it's a five-point Spartan lead. Chris Nelson is showing out tonight for sure for Tampa. Back out on top, it comes for Lee. This is Schubert who gives it up. And this is Cheeks. Around a screen by Cheeks. Down low, reverse, shot blocked. And back the other way come the Spartans. They got a 5 And four. a travel violation oh, going to be called. Goodness. And that was called, it looks like, on Malia Sullivan. And so some subs for Lee. Looks like coming in now will be Cameron Grant for the first time. Sitting down will be Becca Cheeks. Well, Cheeks was down there laying on the floor, and Tampa had a five-on-four opportunity and did not connect. Bertram will bring it up. The Spartan lead is five. Trying to work it around. Tilly gives it up, gets it back. Tilly faked the three, dumped it down, ball stolen away. Great job by the Spartans who come back real fast the other way. Great steal in there by UT. And now the Spartans will set it up following the theft by Malia Sullivan. And Sullivan will try to make a move there. Up and, and one. one. And one. Boy, the Spartans are playing. They have come to play with Sullivan's first basket of the game. She averages six and a half. And the foul is going to be called here on Taylor Bodges, who will get her second foul. It's the first foul here in the quarter for either team. So a free throw coming up here now for Sullivan. And with 5.52 left, Tampa's starting to make a little move here on Lee. Sullivan for the year is nine of 20, well let's check that. She is 25 of 47 at the line. 26 of 48, so a little over 50%. She completes the three point play and the Spartan lead is eight. Biggest lead of the game for the University of Tampa. And this is Bertram. Spops, pops, no. Rebound yanked down inside by Sullivan. Boy, she's, she's contributed very nicely to the Spartans coming off the bench. She's done a really great job, not only just rebounding, but she's provided points for the Spartans as well. Nelson gives it up, driving in, layup. Will nice. go, and one, and one. And that looks like Dory Nagy's going to get it. Or, sorry, I called her Nagy. I meant to Nodge. say Nodge. Yep. And she's got eight points. Here comes Schubert back in now for Lee. Free throw coming up. Spartans lead it by 10. One free throw. And Nodge was the newcomer of the year this year in the league. Nodge now 109 of 139, 78.3 from the line. And boy, she's only a freshman. Working it around. Lee looking for an opening. Grant had it momentarily. Spartans get it back again. Great block, great defensive block on a makeup on that. Gave up baseline, but came back and didn't give up and got the block. Spartan lead is 11 and Nelson has the basketball. Driving through, Sullivan. runner is good. How about that? That's Malia Sullivan and Mike Rowe wants it, or Marty Rowe wants a timeout. Ma the Tampa Spartans have a 13-point lead, and we will step aside. You are watching the quarterfinals of the 2019 NCAA Division II Women's South Regional Tournament right here on the Sunshine State Conference Digital Network. This is the University of Tampa.
explore your dreams, discover your talents, get ready to invent, innovate, and be a leader. This is the University of Tampa. Welcome back to the Fieldhouse here in Lakeland. We have a timeout right now. And we're looking at the replay with the block by University of Tampa. Gave up baseline, came back, got the block, and returned it and going the other way. And as a result, Sullivan gets a three-point play on the other end. And boy, look, the score line is a little bit of a surprise. We had a surprise earlier on with Nova against Union. And while a 5-4 is not really that much mm -hmm. difference, a 13-point advantage at this stage of the game, that is huge for the University of Tampa. Well, what I loved right before that timeout is Sullivan made that drive down the lane with a finger roll and made it. And as she came over, who was the first one off the bench to give her a chest butt? But tighter. This is Bertram. Lee down 13, gives it up for Grant. Bertram gets it back. Back out for Roddy. Trying to go in behind her back, caught it, caught it and that will be a travel violation. And boy, right now, the turnovers are mounting up. Actually, Tampa has 11, and Lee now with six. But it doesn't seem like the, the turnovers have hurt the Spartans because Lee only has six points off those turnovers. Absolutely. Lee's putting a little, a little high pressure on them with a little zone press. Deep three. No. Rebound to Roddy off the miss by Sullivan, and Roddy will bring it back up. Kicks it back out, and Lee will run its offense through Haley Hughes, who just came back. This is Schubert. Oh, they're not going to let her shoot. She's a good one. Well, Nelson doing a great job on Schubert defensively right now. Little fade away at the free throw line. It's going to go out of bounds. That's an air ball by Roddy, and it's going to belong here to the University of Tampa Spartans. Emily Eshoo coming back in for UT, and also back in Becca Cheeks and Tori Lentz back in now for Lee, and boy, it looks to me like that Marty Rowe is just trying to find some answers here yeah, for his team. Yeah, absolutely. He's been shuffling players in and out, trying to find an answer. Right now, Lee's struggling on the offensive end. They run that Princeton offense usually to a T. Patient picks back door, but right now they are struggling. Wide open inside is not. She didn't get it to fall, though. And the rebound taken by Cheeks, and here come the Flames the other way. This is Bertram going up. Got it. What a shot by Abby Bertram. She's now got nine. And the lead is down to 11. Abby Bertram took that ball right into the chest of Naj and made it off the glass. McClure gives it up to Nelson. Nelson with seven points, two rebounds so far. Trying to go inside for Naj again. Naj spin move, kicks it out. McClure f passed up the three, now Nelson. Here's McClure again. Going to go into the baseline in traffic, didn't get it to go. One back by Lee, the rebound taken down there by Bodges, and here come the Flames, down 11. Speaking of 11, that's Bertram gives it up. Jumper is no good. And we got a foul inside on UT. And that time it looked like Tampa was standing around just a little bit. Absolutely. And that allowed Tory Lentz to come in there and try to get a rebound. Definitely they were standing. Nobody was looking to turn and box out their man. And what happened? Tory Lynch went right in and got a rebound. Foul was called on a shoe. Gets her first. Giving Lee a second opportunity and here. Schubert misses the three. There's another rebound by Bertram. And boy, Tampa right now all of a sudden just appears to be standing around a little bit on the defensive end. This is Schubert. Runner in the lane. Won't kiss it off the front rim and that's, it's going to be Nelson with a rebound bringing it back. That's her second one she's had just like that right off the front top of the rim. So here is Nelson around the Nodge screen. Nodge going through traffic layup good. Wow, Great nice. job by Dory Nodge who's now got 11 points. Spartans back up 13. UT definitely looking to take advantage of taking up from the top of the key and driving to the left side of the lane. Bertram takes the long three that's not going and Nodge gets the rebound. So here is Nelson in front court. Boy, the Spartans have really, really played well so far. We're coming up on the final two minutes of the first half. And I don't want to say it's been all Tampa, but it's pretty close. Pretty close. This is McClure. UT taking Tonight. the time, setting up, trying to just get a really good shot off here. McClure open oh. three will not go. And the rebound comes down for the flame taken in there by Bodges and back 
comes Abby Bertram. Bodges dumps it down into the paint. Trying to go up, and we got a foul, I believe. Ooh. Yep. They're going to call a foul. I thought, I thought maybe there would be a walk, but not quite. So let's see who they get. They're going to get Nodge, who will get her second foul. And send Becca Cheeks to the line. Cheeks with two points so far here in the game. And for the year, she's 19 of 29 at the line, 65.5%. Can get the Flames a little closer. And does. Three points for her. Tampa will get Lauren Cote back in. And it looks like Schubert coming back in. They're going to sit Bertram now for these final couple minutes as checking back in here now will be Lindsey Roddy. Smart move there, not letting Bertram get in the game and pick up a third foul right before the half. And two for two. So Cheeks has contributed four points. She's going to come out. And Nikki Wadinski will come back. Wadinski. And Nelson Malinbaum coming up here now for UT. So a little full court pressure here by Marty Rowe. Nelson will run baseline, gets it into Mitchell, and the ball stolen away. Little runner in the lane will not go in. Schubert did not get it to fall. It goes out, and Lee will keep the basketball. That is the third little runner that she's missed right in the lane like that. Timeout called by the University of Tampa, 32nd timeout. Tom Jesse really not happy with what he's seeing right now, so we'll go ahead and keep it here. And right now Tampa's 14 of 22 from the floor for 63.6%, and they are also out-rebounding Lee 20 to 15. Lee only 8 of 35 from the floor. I'm looking at that right now. It's going to be hard to win a game when you're shooting 22.9% from the floor and 18.2% from three. That's really, really tough. And Lee with only two free throws in the game. The Spartans with only four. You know, we were talking earlier about the fact that the, I probably shouldn't say this, this jinx it, but these games have gone pretty fast today, and it's because there really haven't been a lot of free throws. That's exactly right. Referee's been kind of letting them play today. There was a little ticky-tack early on in this game, and now it just kind of seems to have opened up a little bit, and they're letting them get up and down and play. So Lancel inbound. Comes back out. This is Wadinski into the corner. Roddy. Roddy sees a little opening, going to take it up and scores nice. the bucket. Lindsay Roddy's first basket of the game. She averages eight. And now Lee back to within nine. And putting some pressure on the Spartans here as Nelson brings it up. So Lee's been really good here, having good possessions on offense. And now they're going to have to try to stop Tampa on defense. This is Nelson. Gives it up to Mitchell. This is a shoe. Nelson again. And the ball goes out. Whose basketball will it be? It's going to go back to Lee. And boy, Tom Jesse is furious about that one. And again, we have seen some indecisions on calls here today when balls go out of bounds. Yeah, you, you've had a couple of the refs look at maybe the lead official to see what they think. And then there's all of a sudden a call. And you know for some of the coaches, that doesn't sit very well. Tori Lentz coming out. Schubert coming back. What do they always tell you? Just make sure that it looks like you know what you're doing and <laughs> yeah. make the call the right way. <laughs> yeah, when you're and we when we actually saw one change earlier today, we which did? is surprising. There's a deep three, nice. and that is going to go. Great shot in there by Bodges. Her second three of the game, and now that lead is six points. And the Spartans will bring it up. So Lee has battled back here in yep. the waning moments of the first half. They've definitely taken care of the ball on the offensive end and got some good shots, and Bodges at 35% from three stepped in there and drained it. This is Mitchell. Still with it. Lee needs or Sullivan, to, rather. My bad. Yeah, Sullivan. Lee needs to sit down and have a good defensive possession here. Jumper outside. Air ball. One by Lee. Bertram will bring it up. Long pass down. Trying to save it. They do. And somehow they keep it in play. Bertram at the buzzer will come up short. And so we have reached the end of the first half. Tampa outscores Lee 16-13. In the second quarter, and the Spartans will take a 31-25 lead into the locker room here in this final quarterfinal game of this South Region Tournament. Don't go away, our halftime show coming up, and you're watching the quarterfinals of this NCAA Division II Women's South Regional Basketball Tournament right here on the Sunshine State Conference Digital Network. I was told the place I was looking for didn't exist. A place that could refine my raw talents into something greater. Where I could ask big questions about my faith, not settling for easy answers. 
and I could risk what's comfortable in pursuit of my dream. To join with others, find my voice, and change the world. I was told that place didn't exist. Then I found Lee. This is the University of Tampa. Explore your dreams. Discover your talents. Get ready to invent, innovate, and be a leader. This is the University of Tampa. From court to court and lane to lane under the lights or under the sun. No one delivers Division II sports like NCAA.com. The center of D2 is inside the NCAA.com hub. With exclusive highlights of every sport and live broadcasts of every Division II championship found nowhere else. Make NCAA.com yours. The home of Division II. Welcome back to the Streamline Sale Arena here in Lakeland. We're going to take a look at Taylor Bodges right here, shooting the three to help Lee to get back into this game. She's a 35% three-point shooter, and she helped close that gap right before the half. Yeah, big time, a 7-0 run by the Flames in the final one minute and 35 seconds. UT shut out for the final 227 of the first half. Tampa had a lead as much as 13. It's now down to six, and this one is gonna be interesting. There's some numbers for you. Boy, look at that field goal percentage from Lee. I mean, they, they can't find it so far here tonight. Well, we just talked about that. They're 27% from the floor, 25% from three. It's going to be hard to win a ball game like that, but their shots were looking better as they were closing out the half. They were having some nice defensive stops. One of the big things that I see here is the points in the paint. Tampa has 28 to Lee's eight points in the paint. And then we always talk about the rebounding edge. Not that big of a deal yet. It's 20 to 17 in favor of Tampa. But that shooting percentage is really going to have to change in that second half for yeah. Lee. And take a look at the offensive rebounds here. Lee beating Tampa 9-2. to two. One of the reasons why Lee has taken 37 field goal attempts. <laughs> Tampa has taken only 23 so far here in the game. So the Spartans have been shooting the basketball really well. And Lee has been just pounding the glass <laughs> and just haven't gotten the fall. And Lee's been shooting it a lot. But we also look at turnovers here, and Tampa had 13 turnovers to Lee's six. So maybe Lee can continue with that and maybe capitalize on some of those turnovers in the second half. Yeah, they haven't really capitalized as well as they probably mm -hmm. should. Only 11 points off those turnovers. Yep. And right now, Lee with only five points off the Spartans' six turnovers in the game. So the scorers right now for both teams for Lee, Abby Bertram leads with nine points, but she's only four of 12 from the floor here, one of five from three and three rebounds for her. She leads the way, six points for Cheeks off the bench and six points on a pair of threes by Taylor Bodges. For the University of Tampa, Dory Nodge with 11 points. She's five of six from the floor. She has had a really good first half, three rebounds in 16 minutes to go along with those 11 points. And Chris Nelson, boy, you don't hear much about her, but yeah. she has really played well. She's three of four from the floor. One of two at the line, seven points, three rebounds, played all 20 minutes in that first half. Well, she definitely was a floor general for the University of Tampa. I know one of their concerns was the point guard spot, and she's actually been doing a tremendous job. And like you said, she's been attacking. She's been setting up the offense. She's been telling people where they need to be. And defensively, she's done a great job as well because I look at Schubert. Schubert is 0 for 7 right now yep. and 0 for 2 from 3. The one thing, though, that UT should not – be complacent about is with Schubert she scored 21 second half points in that West Georgia game in their tournament so I don't expect her to continue with those numbers she's had a lot of good looks at the basket but some of them just been falling a little short but how about this Titer picked up two fouls has played only 10 minutes for the Spartans she's been their leading scorer all year mm -hmm. she does have six points three of four and six rebounds but she's only played half the half and the Spartans still lead it by six. That says a lot about the players on the floor. Yeah, so there could be a big turnaround here in this second half with Titer playing more minutes and maybe Schubert coming around and getting into her offensive mode that she's used to being in. So the second half could be just something a lot different than what we saw here in the first half. 
Well, don't forget, the winner of this game will play the top-seeded Florida Southern College Mocks. That'll be tomorrow night at 7.30. Our other semifinal at 5 o'clock will feature the West Florida Argonauts, a big winner over Eckerd, against the Nova Southeastern Sharks, a big surprise winner in the 2-7 game over the, over the Union Lady Bulldogs. And I guess that has been the surprise so far. But if Tampa can keep going, this will be right there with them in a way. Absolutely. I mean, the winner of this game, we talked about the four and five seeds and how this is kind of like a heavyweight title fight between these two seeds. Whoever comes out of here, I mean, this is a great opportunity for them to maybe use this win as a platform to go into the semifinals and work their way right into the championship game. Well, don't forget, too, the men start tomorrow down at Fort Lauderdale Nova. The Mox will play at 2.30 in the afternoon against Delta State. Lee, or rather Lynn, will play Huntsville at noon. At 5 o'clock, it'll be Nova against Miles. And at 7.30, it will be West Alabama and Valdosta State, a pair of Gulf South Conference teams. So we're going to go ahead and step aside for around five minutes. But it has been the Spartans leading it all the way. Now we will see whether that late run by Lee can get the Flames back into this thing. Spartans lead it by six. Don't go away. You're watching the quarterfinals of the 2019 NCAA Division II Women's South Regional Basketball Tournament right here on the Sunshine State Conference Digital Network. I was told the place I was looking for didn't exist. A place that could refine my raw talents into something greater where I could ask big questions about my faith, not settling for easy answers. And I could risk what's comfortable in pursuit of my dream. To join with others, find my voice, and change the world. I was told that place didn't exist. Then I found Lee. This is the University of Tampa. Explore your dreams, discover your talents, get ready to invent, innovate, and be a leader. This is the University of Tampa. From court to court and lane to lane under the lights or under the sun. No one delivers Division II sports like NCAA.com. The center of D2 is inside the NCAA.com hub. With the exclusive highlights of every sport and live broadcasts of every Division II championship found nowhere else. Make NCAA.com yours. The home of Division II.
I was told the place I was looking for didn't exist. A place that could refine my raw talents into something greater. Where I could ask big questions about my faith, not settling for easy answers. And I could risk what's comfortable in pursuit of my dream. To join with others, find my voice, and change the world. I was told that place didn't exist. Then I found Lee. Under the sun. No one delivers Division II sports like NCAA.com. The center of D2 is inside the NCAA.com hub. With exclusive highlights of every sport and live broadcasts of every Division II championship found nowhere else. Make NCAA.com yours. The home of Division II. Welcome back to the Streamline Sale Arena here on the campus of Florida Southern College in Lakeland, Florida. There's our halftime score. The number five seed University of Tampa Spartans with a six-point lead over the number four seed and the Gulf South Conference Tournament champion, Lee Flames, a six-point Spartan lead. Jim Henderson and Lisa Beamer with you. And, Lisa, as we head down to the final half today of the four quarterfinal games, Lee has some work to do here. And the one thing we talked about they just got to shoot the basketball a whole lot better than what they've done. Absolutely. And you know what? I wouldn't be too sad if I'm sitting there coaching them and we shot 27% from the floor, 25% from three, and we're only down six yeah, points. That's right. That's right. I, would, I wouldn't be too unhappy about that. I would just tell my kids, listen, we got to start grinding. Keep doing what we're doing because the shots are going to fall. Because we saw the shots were good shots. They just were not going in. And like you said, the amount of shots they've taken – They've taken 37 shots. And here Tom Jesse is talking to his girls, probably telling them, listen, we got two more quarters to move on in yep. this tournament. You bet. You bet. They've got, they've got a pretty clear shot here now if they can just continue to play the way they have in the first 20 minutes. But, you know, I suspect Lee has had a tremendous year, 25-6 and six overall. I suspect that we're going to see the best effort possible from this Flames team. Oh, I, I agree. And, and like I said, I wouldn't count them out coming into this second half. These girls here, they're young. Like you said, too, he gets these girls for four years. They are used to this system. They know this Princeton system, and they're just going to keep on running it. And Tampa's going to have to cover the back doors, cover the picks, and be patient as well. And right now, no one's in foul trouble. There are a couple, two fouls for Titer and two fouls for Nudge, and nobody with more than one for Lee. So fouls are really not a factor, at least at this point. And we'll see whether or not that continues as we go forward. Tampa will get the basketball. We are underway. Second half, third quarter here now. The Spartans lead it by six. And let's see if they can open the third quarter by increasing that lead. It'll come for McClure. McClure had an open. They're going to let her go in on Bertram. She'll score. Nice job by Julia McClure. She's got four in that Spartan lead. Goes up to eight in a hurry. Back the other way come the Flames. Flames have been playing from behind most of the way here. Here's Bertram. She takes that jumper. She nails it. Nice. And, boy, if she gets going, she's got 11, and now it's still a six-point Spartan lead. This is Nelson. She has been a tremendous field general so far. McClure again, guarded by Bertram. McClure looks down low, kicked by Bertram, and the Spartans will retain possession. Definitely looking to get Naj. It looked like off of that pick and roll with McClure. So Nelson will trigger the inbound here. Right near the foul line and layup good. And, and one. one for Dory Nodge. He's got 13 and a chance for 14 coming up. Nodge right here on the pick, faces back, takes it in on the left, puts it up, and gets the N1. Foul will go on Schubert, her second. And Nodge makes the free throw. She is two for two at the line today. The Spartan lead has grown to nine. Certainly not what Lee was planning on coming right out after that halftime. Roddy gives it up. There's Schubert. Schubert in and out, no good. And the rebound comes down to Emily Eshu, and she'll bring it up herself. And Schubert's shooting struggles are still continuing. This is Nelson. 
And again, Tampa looks like it wants to run some clock, get their offense going. Here's McClure. Another See? pick and roll with Najah McClure. Pick back up, Nelson faked it. Here is a shoe around a screen by Titer. And Naj down low for Titer. Titer going up, little reverse will go in. For Steiser Titer, who now has eight, and the Spartans are up 11. Yeah, really nice move by Titer there. She kind of got closed out on the left-hand side of the basket and just took a real controlled, nice dribble and went on the opposite side and used the rim to protect on the right. A wide-open three for Nikki Wadinski, her first basket of the game, and that draws the Flames a little bit closer, down eight. Well, I will tell you what I thought was interesting. Wadinski's a 6'2 junior, but I did see in the stats that she shoots 50% from three. She looked really good on that one. Here is McClure and Nelson and a shoe. Deep three by Emily. A shoe will nice. go. Her first basket of the game. And now the Spartans lead is back up to 11. And a shoe shoots 40% from three. That really looked nice. She squared herself up and let it fly. 47 three of the year. There's a runner. No. And there's a rebound by Naj. Spartans with 11 point lead have the basketball. And boy, right now, Lisa, if I'm Lee, I would be a little concerned. Well, it's, they're having a tough time stopping Tampa on this end, and then they're also having a tough time to get their shots falling. This is tighter, almost had it stolen away. Now Nelson and McClure. McClure's gotten off to a really good start here in the second half. A shoe, shot clock a factor. Nelson got to take it. She does, just off. And the rebound comes down for Lee, and here comes Abby Bertram back the other way. Bertram, only a junior, has had a tremendous year. Into the block. This is Wadinski. Wadinski up. Wadinski, no. Rebound comes down to Naj. And for Naj, her fifth rebound of the game. Yeah, and right there is just a prime example. Lee's having a tough time. They're getting good looks at the basket, really close in looks at the basket, and they just cannot get them to connect. This is Naj again. Gives it up for Nelson. Nelson kicks out for a shoe. Needs some help. Shot clock, Shot clock a factor. Winded. Nelson knocked, thrown out of bounds. And is it a foul? Let's see. Or does she just lose the ball? Looks like she's going to keep it. Did they call a foul? They, they did. They called a yeah. foul on that. Wow. And they called the foul on Haley Schubert, who gets her third foul. That's a big foul, too. I would love to see that again because I surely didn't see anything. I just saw that she got there, had nowhere to go, and just kind of threw the ball up in the air and fell. Yep, that's what it looked like to me too. Nelson to the free throw line. She is one of two so far today, and now two of three. Eight points for Chris Nelson. A lot of subs. You can see the Marty Road trying to figure something out here. Coming back in is Lentz, Cheeks, and it looks like Tilly. And Nelson has more than doubled her average right now. And in and out. Spartans by 12. Abby Bertram with the ball for the Flames. Dumped it off. Tried the Princeton back door, didn't work. Going through this time, that's up and, and that's one. and one. A shoe is gonna get the foul and her number 23 counterpart, Podges, is gonna get the basket. Podges, Shoot. a great strong move to the basket right off of this little handoff. Took it right in. Excellent. Looking for, they, Tampa was looking for the travel, but Emily Eshoo got the foul. So Bodges to the free throw line. Chance to complete the three-point play. And somehow it rolls in <laughs> and stays there. She's 24 of 33 now, 73%. The Lee Flames got the church roll on that yeah, one. Sure did. Spartan lead is nine, and a good job to get the ball in front court against that pressure. This is Nelson. Kicks it to the right side for Naj. Back out, Nelson Looking again. Looking for tighter down on the block. A shoe back out on top. That's a jumper behind the line. That will go. Nice. That is Naj again. Now 16 points for Dory Naj. She has been... There have been no answers by Lee. Deep three by Lee. That's not going to go. And a rebound comes down for Titer. Spartans by 11 with the ball. Nelson into the corner. McClure. I'm surprised McClure didn't take that. She was wide it open. At, it looked like it, right? Mm-hmm. 
Now it looks like they want to run some clock, get more out of their offense here. Looking to get tighter again, down on that block. McClure. And Naj off the roll again. Naj the jumper, and she's one. fouled and one. Dory Naj with 18 points in the game. Chance to hit 19, and the Spartan lead goes up again. Same exact play as the last time down the floor. Looking inside, looking for Naj. She comes off the screen right at the elbow and pulls up and takes the jumper and is fouled. Terrific play there by Naj. The foul is going to be called on Bodges, who gets her second. Or let's check that. They called it instead on Cheeks, who gets her first. Three fouls here now on Lee here in this quarter. So one more for Naj. Naj with 18 points in the game. And boy, has she been tough. She's already over her average. She averages 13.6 points a game. Naj with 19, including eight of nine from the field. <clears throat> Five rebounds as well for Dory Naj. So here we go. That Spartan lead has grown to 14. There's the Bertram jumper. She won't get it to go. A rebound for Nelson, and here come the Spartans the other way, and this time they threw it away. Nice. Bertram got her hand in there. That could have been an easy layup on the other end. Kicked it out. Spartans almost had a steal, and somehow, some way, the Flames keep the ball. Wow. Even though Bertram almost jumped out of her shoes to keep <laughs> it in play. Spartan defense has been strong, and you're watching it here. Back out it comes. Trying to go through there was Tilly, couldn't do it. There's Tilly just getting a shot off. No. Rebound for Nosh. Holy cow. She cleared the deck. UT had a great defensive possession right there. Deep three, a shoe. Got it. Holy cow. Emily Ashu's got six here in the quarter. It's a 17 point Spartan lead. Timeout. And Absolutely. Marty Rose says he has seen enough. Spartan fans are going wild here at the Streamline Sale Arena. The Spartans lead it by 17. Don't go away. You're watching the quarterfinals of the 2019 NCAA Division II Women's South Regional Basketball Tournament right here on the Sunshine State Conference Digital Network. This is the University of Tampa. Explore your dreams, discover your talents, get ready to invent, innovate, and be a leader. This is the University of Tampa. Welcome back to the Streamline Sail Arena Court. Boy, that bunch right there, it's got to be really happy right now. Everything the Spartans are doing in this game is turning to gold. They lead the Lee Flames by 17 points. And you don't have to go any further than look at the second half shooting for the Spartans to find out what's really going on. They are seven of eight from the floor, and that increases their shooting percentage for the game to 67.7, 21 of 31, while Lee is only 13 of 46, 28.3%. And you know, Lee's shooting woes are continuing into this second half, which we thought maybe they keep shooting. They're gonna shoot themselves right out of it and it doesn't seem to be working. They are still struggling. Spartans lead the rebounding battle also, 26 to 19. Eight rebounds for Stasia Titer to go along with her eight points. So Schubert will inbound. Lee needs to get moving if they're gonna remain in this tournament. Here is Bertram going through off the glass and, and in. That. Abby Bertram with 13. And the lead now is 15. You can't get it all back at once, right, no, Lisa? So you, you gotta got go exactly. possession, possession by, by possession. possession. Here is McClure, open three, that's Nelson. That will rim out, and it will be a rebound yanked down inside by Cheeks. So here is Bertram again, can get her team a little closer. Sends it back out from Tilly. Need a good offensive possession here. They just got a great stop defensively. Here is Bertram again, open jumper, a little long, rebound Nelson. And the little point guard gets her fourth rebound of the game for Tampa. Into the corner, McClure. This is Nodge going through traffic. Didn't get that one to go. Nodge had the little Euro step working there. Cheeks had the rebound. Bertram has it now. 
Back out on top it comes, and this is Hughes. Haley Hughes back in. Lee has struggled in all phases. Schubert up and scores and one. So Haley Schubert now with four points in the game. And a chance to complete the three-point play. Haley and Schubert, let's watch she, it here. She really needed that. She needs to get going offensively. Nice drive. And one at the basket. Hopefully this will get her going. So we are going to have a timeout on the floor. Let's see if this is a full. We're going to go ahead and keep it here no matter what. It's a 13-point Spartan lead. It will be a full timeout. Again, tomorrow's two games will start at 5 p.m. Eastern Daylight Time. And the first game will feature the seventh-seeded Nova Southeastern Sharks against the West Florida Argos. And then at 7.30 tomorrow night, it will be the winner of this game here taking on the top-seeded Florida Southern College Mocs. The championship game will be here Monday night at 7 o'clock right here on the Streamline Sail Arena floor. You know, we, have a, we had a famous guy here in this building this year. Streamline Sail was, the, was one of the original. That's a real, the guy's name was Streamline Sail. He was one of the originators of the Sixth Man Club here at Florida Southern, which is one of the more famous booster clubs in the country. Well, his father runs an insurance company here in Lakeland, and his son is Chris Sale of the Boston Red Sox. Wow, I didn't know that. It's Chris Sale of the Boston Red Sox, and Chris was here with his family on the night they dedicated the floor. To, now, Streamline Sale has been deceased for many years, but they dedicated the floor to Streamline Sale here that evening, and Chris Sale and his family were here. Well, I was going to ask you, whatever happened to the couches that you guys used to have here? I don't know. That's a good question. I have no idea. <laughs> well, here is Schubert trying to finish that three-point play. Can't do it. And Nodge gets another rebound. That's her seventh. 19.7 rebounds for Dory Nodge. And the ball kicked out by Bertram. Lee putting a little token pressure up here, picking him up a little before half court. Two and a half to go here in the quarter, I would think that Lee would need to get this thing in single digits maybe by the end of this quarter. Here is Nelson, gives it up for McClure. And back to Nelson. This is tighter. Had Naj down in the short corner. They didn't see her. Kicked it back out. Nelson wide open, nice tighter. Nice movement. That will not go, but the Spartans will get a rebound, and Naj gets it back out, a fresh 30 for the Spartans. And they'll use some of it right here. Coming up on two minutes to go here in the quarter. Almost lost, Nelson did, but she got it back. This is tighter again. She had a little open jumper. Got and it. In. Tighter now in double figures with 10, and the Spartan lead grows to 15. Not what the Lee Flames are wanting right now. They need to cut this lead before the end of this quarter. Looking around, back out for Bertram. Shot taken and good. How about Abby Bertram? Well, 16. Abby Bertram doing a great job, but she's got to get some of her friends to kind of mm. help her out a little bit. They say Bertram with 15 points here now at two. So the lead is 13. This is Nelson. Did not take the nice screen. Now she does. This is Tyter. We got a player down. That was Bertram, and Tyter will score. And they're going to stop play here. Let's make sure Abby Bertram is okay. Well, Abby Bertram's pointing at the floor, saying that there was a wet spot there. So they're going to come out and take a look at it, and that's what she's saying is that she actually slipped when she was trying to play defense on tighter. You know the biggest slip of the year, right, in college basketball? What's that? Zion Williamson when he slipped <laughs> against North Carolina and no tore, tore his shoe off. <laughs> I heard they fired that Nike rep guy. Yeah, I well, it was Paul George's shoe, and he called Nike. He said, "What's going on?" And they're trying to—they were trying to figure it out. They don't know what happened, actually. Shot blocked in there. Had a great block there by Tyter. She's ahead of the pack. She's not alone. Dumps it off McClure. No. Oh. Rebound, and Bertram somehow comes out with it for Lee. Boy, Abby Bertram is really good. See why she was the conference MVP. Turn no, the three no good. Nice, another rebound. And McClure will hold it and bring it back up. Spartans can hold. There is about a 10-second difference between shot and game here in the third quarter. Well, if anything right here, Lee just needs to say, we need to have a mental victory here and not allow them to score before the end of this quarter. This is tighter. 
You know she's going in if she can. Oh, they tie her up. Jump ball, and it's going to go back to Lee. So now the Flames will get the final shot here in quarter number three. Checking back in for the Flames is Haley Hughes. And let's see what Lee can do coming up. They got to do a little bit more mop up. Well, this is the fourth game on this floor here today. I'm not not at all surprised. It might be a little bit damp. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> She's been getting a lot of work over there with that little mop. So here is Abby Bertram. And let's see if she can get her team a little closer heading into quarter number four. Gonna try to work it around that time for Bodges. This is Bodges again. She fade away on the jumper, won't go. Boy, Schubert tried to run it down. She does. She gets the shot off and just missed. Just missed. So we have come to the end of quarter number three. The Spartans have a big one. They get 23 points here in the quarter, and they will take a 15-point lead into the final 10 minutes of this game here tonight on the Streamline Sail Arena floor. Don't go away. Fourth quarter coming up. You're watching the quarterfinals of the 2019 NCAA Division II Women's South Regional Basketball Tournament right here on the Sunshine State Conference Digital Network. I was told the place I was looking for didn't exist. A place that could refine my raw talents into something greater. Where I could ask big questions about my faith, not settling for easy answers. And I could risk what's comfortable in pursuit of my dream. To join with others find my voice and change the world. I was told that place didn't exist. Then I found Lee. From court to court and lane to lane under the lights or under the sun. No one delivers Division II sports like NCAA.com. The center of D2 is inside the NCAA.com hub. Welcome back to the Streamline Sail Arena. There's our scorer. The fifth seeded Tampa Spartans lead it by 15. There's a good look at our stats. And you know what? Lisa Beamer is not getting any better for Lee. No, it's not. Their shooting woes are still continuing. I mean, they're looking at 30% compared to Tampa's 62%. Rebounds are a little off, but it's just the shooting has really, really caused them some problems. So here we go. Final 10 minutes. Can the Spartans hold on? Can Lee make a run? We are about to find out. McClure back out for Titer. Kicked it out. This is Nudge, that little short jumper that will not roll in. Didn't get the roll. Rebound comes down for Hughes. And the Flames back the other way. Trying to go in. Shot no good. Missed by Schubert. And she stripped it, got a rebound, put it up, and still missed it. And now Nudge gets a rebound. Boy, Haley Schubert just does not stop running. She is really, really putting in an effort here and I feel for her because every shot she's putting up is just a little bit off. Yep, yep. T tonight she's only two of 12 from the floor. That's not That's just her spot. Not. She'll get another one. 21 for Dory Nudge and the Spartans are up 17. I think her picture is down there on the floor because she's <laughs> hit about four from that spot on the elbow. Bertram with a deep three. That's not going and Nodge gets another rebound. 11 rebounds, 21 points for Dory Nodge. And boy, if the mocks are watching this, they're going to have to do some work on Dory Nodge tomorrow night if this, if this lead holds up. Well, Dory Nodge is having a great night, but I tell you what, I am really proud of Chris Nelson running the point. Down low, tighter. Kicked it out. Nelson takes the deep three. That'll go. How about Chris Nelson? She now has 11 points, and the Spartans are poured and on, leading by 20. She could be my pick for the MVP tonight, I think. Yeah, I would. Well, I would. I would it's almost hard for me not to say Dory Nodge. And a steal here by Tampa by Nodge. But I go either way on that one. I mean, mm -hmm. Nodge has just been brilliant. 21 and 11, and we still have eight minutes to play. And I'm watching Chris Nelson. She's looking over at Coach Jesse every time she crosses the half-court line, and he's telling her what to call, and she's pulling the ball out, and she's making her team run the calls that Tom Jesse is calling from the bench. Tighter trying to go through. There's an open three by a shoe that won't go. Abby Bertram will get a rebound, her fifth, and she'll bring it up. Lee's got a long, long way to come back, down 20. Here is Schubert, and she'll back it out. Boy, the Spartans have just been so good, and we're going to get a foul on Nelson. 
Her first foul, it's the first foul here in the quarter. Here comes three more subs in. Roddy comes back. Cheeks comes back. And it looked like Tilly comes back. Inbounds pass coming up. And it will belong to the Flames. This is Schubert. Takes the deep three. Missed it. Roddy saves it. Baseline. She's cut off. Reverse. Got it. Nice shot. <laughs> I don't know how she by did Lindsay that. Roddy. She's got four. And it's an 18-point Spartan advantage. Nelson gives it up to Nodge. A shoe. The jumper. No. Rebound Lee. Quickly coming the other way is Roddy. Roddy going in. She'll shoot two, and the foul will go on Nelson. Or sorry, Titer. Titer will get her third foul, but that's her first foul since the first quarter. Yeah, she picked up those two pretty quickly, and then, oh, here we go with the replay. I, I don't know how she did that. That was pretty, that, Roddy, that was pretty amazing. She was all the way underneath the basket. It was kind of Michael Jordan-esque with that. Reverse layup. Roddy missed the free throw here. She is 46 of 67, just under 70% from the line this year. One more coming up. Game's not over yet. We've got a long way to go. Free throw by Roddy goes in this time. She now has five points. And you can see Lee is going to put some pressure on. Well, they're going to have to do something to just change a little bit, not make Tampa so comfortable in their offense. Foul's going to be called here on Bodges, who will pick up her third foul, second foul rather, and that will be two fouls here now in the period on Lee. Here is Nelson, gives it up, here is Titer. Nelson almost threw it away. Nelson's got to scramble to get it, and it's gonna be saved and won, and Schubert goes in and gets the layup, almost went too hard, and Tom Jesse wants a timeout. He does not like what he sees, and I can't say I blame him. Absolutely. He does not want any of this momentum to turn and switch by any means. Fight for the ball. Great job there. Schubert gets a finally a nice, easy look at the basket. So it's a 15-point lead here for the Spartans, but we have a long, long way to go here in the fourth quarter. This thing is not over yet, and Lee looks like it wants to run a little bit of helter-skelter offense here, trying to force some quick steals, get some turnovers, get some points, and you know what, they, it's a good chance the Flames could do that, and the Spartans are going to have to try to figure out a way not to let that happen. Well, great move by Tom Jesse right there to call a yep, timeout no and kind of stop it and let his team know, listen, this is what they're trying to do to us right now. We can't allow them to pressure us, and we need to continue to run what we've been running to make us successful right now. So great timeout by Tom Jesse to stop that momentum for Lee. Two timeouts for each team remaining. And what I love, timeout is over. Where is Tampa? They're waiting for Lee to come out of the timeout. Standing out on the court, waiting on them. Nodge, Shue, McClure, Nelson, and Titer. That's the starters. And Marty Rowe still having some words, as you can see, with his team there. But he's got to feel a little bit better here, Lisa, because they've gotten going a little bit here. The, this quarter is 5-5 right now. Now, and while they haven't made up any ground, they haven't lost any either. Exactly, and that's the best it's been for a while now. Inbounds pass. There's the pressure. Titer gets it to a shoe. Back to Titer. And a good job by Tampa to beat the press and get it into front court. Stasia Titer with it. Nodge just barreling through, and we got a foul on Lee. Naj has been doing a little bit of everything here tonight. She's been able to step out and hit the jumper. She's taking people off the dribble. She's been posting down low. She's just been an offensive threat all the way around for Tampa. Roddy's second foul. And a substitution coming in now as Haley Hughes back in. Sitting down was Anna Woodford. Tampa gets the ball in. And at what point, Lisa, do you really make sure you start to milk some of this uh, possession clock? Well, I think Tampa's been doing a pretty good job. I mean, they haven't been taking very many quick shots. McClure's shot is missed, and there's a foul 
called from behind. Boy, a great pass by Naj. Very nice pass by Naj. Once again, we talked about what she's doing on the offensive end, and you got to remember too, she's six foot two, yeah. and she's able to take somebody off the dribble and make a nice pass, just like a guard would do. She's she's having a wonderful night. Cheeks will pick up her second foul. That's four fouls now, by the way, on Lee. So the Spartans may be getting to the line here real soon. McClure does a very nice job on that first one. She is 11 of 13 from the line this year. Woodford back in now. It looks like an offense-defense switch. So one more coming up here for McClure. And the Spartans are now 8 of 10 at the free throw line here today. And their lead is 17, and we go under six minutes to go. Lee needs points. This is Schubert. She can get him for him, no doubt about that. Spin move into the lane. Shot blocked. And She'll foul. shoot two. Schubert has really, really been working. I mean, she's been working so hard on the offensive end. It's almost as if she's trying to just will herself to get these shots to fall. So right now, if you can't get him to fall, you get a foul, you get to the free throw line, and you get your shot going from there. Schubert has seven points. She is only a freshman, too, out of Knoxville, Tennessee. Again, again, another sub is Lentz back in now, and Woodford will sit. Well, I know Tom Jesse was really worried about her. When I talked to him before the game, he was talking about what a tough kid she is for just being a freshman. So Bertram back in now. They got her out, and Bodges will sit. So once again, some pressure here from the Flames. Spartans continue to lead it by 15, and... Good job that time by the Flames to get a hand on it. Spartans will keep it. Well, Titer's got to be a little bit better with that pass in bounds. You can't be as lackadaisical with that as she just was, or Lee's going to pick it off and take it. Titer will get it in almost into front court. Nelson will get it there. Nelson guarded by Schubert. Nice little move by Nelson. She's got a layup and too hard, and she's going to be fouled by Schubert. Man, great job by Nelson to just do the blow by there. I think there was no help by Lee there. I think maybe they were thinking she was going to possibly kick the ball right back out. Schubert gets her fourth foul. Nelson, two of four at the line, will come to the free throw line now. In fact, she's the only Spartan to have missed a free throw today. And she is three of five. Well, the one thing that would help Lee by fouling the Spartans, they do stop the clock, but they also may just be trading points here. Exactly. I mean, they're making their free throws right now. Fouling them and putting them on the line, like you said, other than stopping the clock, is not helping them any at all. Not a, not a bit. In fact, with that free throw, oh, oh. no, it goes out. Tampa is winning this quarter 8-7. to seven. So the Spartans have increased their lead by one since the third quarter break. Flames are not stopping, though, and you didn't figure they would. Trying to go through. That's Roddy. She did not get a good shot, but that goes out off the hands of his shoe, and it's going to stay with the Flames. Once again, that's just a perfect example. Roddy made a great move and then just didn't finish. She was open, just did not finish at the rim. Roddy will inbound. Flames are a 29.5 shooting for the game. This is Bertram. She'll step back, she'll pop, she'll nice. get a roll and score. So Abby Bertram now with 17, and the Spartan lead is 14. Really nice release on that jump shot by Abby Bertram. Good job by McClure. Into front court goes tighter. Well, they, it's obvious the Spartans have worked a lot against that kind of pressure because they beat it pretty easily. Here's Nelson giving it up. This is Dory Nige, kicks it back out for a shoe. And Tampa not in any hurry, looking to get a good shot off here. Shot clock running down now. We're at six. Here is Titer, the little fadeaway jumper is good. Titer now with 14. And, boy, if you're Lee, you just got to sort of shake your head. Not that's, much you can do about that. No, and that's tough because you just played them all the way down to almost five seconds on the shot clock playing some good D, and then they turn around and get a jumper at the top of the key. Bertram missed the shot. Now Nelson brings it up, and Tom Jesse puts his hand up and says, yep. get it back. And once again, Nelson just being the floor general out there, looking over at Coach Jesse to see what he wants, and she's doing exactly what he's calling. This is Nodge, and this is Nelson. And Tampa just taking their time again, getting the shot clock under 10. The shoe will be fouled. 
And the foul will go against, it looks like, Taylor Bodges, who will pick up her third. And, and right now, the clock is the enemy for Lee. The shoe is six points, shooting free throws for the first time today. Emily, 57 of 67, 85.1 from the line. Mm -hmm. This is probably not someone you want to put there when you're down 16. Nope. Just one tick over, four minutes to go, and in and out. You jinxed him. I did. That was my <laughs> fault this time. I got it. That's the first jinx all day, I think. I right? know it yeah, is, actually. Not bad. Yep. not bad. Not bad. Well, here's Tilly coming back in. Lee rotating players in and out. Coming out is Woodford. So one more here now. And Lee is quickly running out of time. I mean, the clock is ready to tick into the three minutes now. So they are really, really going to have to speed it up here. Seven points for a shoe. Spartans lead at 17. Bertram for the Flames. Mm. Into the corner. Inside, and we got a whistle, and I think it will. Let's see if they actually give shots here. Foul goes against Titer. That should be four. Now they're, excuse me, they are going to say it instead it will go against Nelson, who will make it three. So the inbounds pass coming up. This is Bertram all the way back out for Roddy. Bertram in the corner, guarded by McClure, down into the block. Cheek trying to go up, can she? Nope. Back out, Bertram again. Deep three by Bertram. Oh, nice. what a shot. What a shot by Abby Bertram. She's got 20, and we get a timeout being called here, it looks like, by Lee. So that will leave the Flames take a, with one timeout Take a look remaining. at Bertram here. Just taken right off the screen and a nice pull-up three. They need a little more of that. Yeah, they sure do. It's a 14-point deficit here now for Lee, and that Lee will only have one more timeout remaining in the game. So anything that Marty Rowe is going to talk about now, they play after this, the players are going to have to be on their own out there, and we'll see what kind of leadership there is on that floor. Yeah, absolutely. You know, Tom, Jesse's probably telling his players, we're going to try to do what we've been doing the whole time, and we're going to dictate the tempo, and when we come across half court, we're going to pull the ball out, and we're going to get it down below yep, 10 and get yep. a good shot. Yeah, I would sure think, though, with, with what time is remaining, that it would behoove Tampa to really get as many good looks mm -hmm. as they can, but run that clock down first. Exactly, and, they, and they've been doing that. They've been doing a great job with that, and that's all a tribute to Chris Nelson. She gets across half court. She looks over at Coach. He tells her what to do, and she's been running the offense to a T. But we'll see if Lee won't try to put a little more pressure on them and see if they can get a couple turnovers here. Well, if it stays like this, it will be the third meeting of the year between the Mocs and the Spartans. <laughs> It'll be here tomorrow night at 7.30. Florida Southern won the first two. Now, they haven't played Tampa in a while. They played here early in the conference season and then right about the start of the second half of the conference. Yeah, they had them back in December, didn't they? Like yep, one of the yep, first games? Yep, one of the first games. And then right in January, not that far in January, when they went over to the Bob Martinez Sports Center and won pretty handily. But it's going to be tough to beat this Tampa team pretty handily. And there's a layup. Oh, and a miss inside by Titer. Wow, didn't see that coming. Here is Roddy. It was a nice curl off the screen and just didn't finish. And the layup is up and in by Bodges, who now has 10. And the lead is down to 12. Long pass oh. for a shoe and just got it. I thought Roddy might have got a hand on that. That was awful close. So here is Titer now. And Tampa will back it out and run some clock. And you can watch the clock with us. This is Nodge looking in. Nope. Let's get it back out to Titer. McClure. McClure. Titer. Nice little fake. Little runner in the lane. It's good. Stars to Tyner with 16, and Tampa goes up 14. Yep, and who do you want to go to there when the minutes, are, the seconds are clicking down, and it would be go to Tyner. This is Bertram. This is Schubert for three, and yes. she'll nail it. Schubert now with 11 points, and she's starting to heat up. Tampa will inbound it, almost a steal there by the Flames. The lead is 11. Getting a little closer here. The Flames will get Tori Lentz back in. Sitting down will be Becca Cheeks. Offense, defense switch here. Long pass oh. complete to a shoe. 
And they're going to back it right out with Nelson. And now they'll run some clock. We come up on two minutes to go. And they'll probably take it down below 10 is my guess. Here is McClure. And tighter. And Nelson. Slippage there by Schubert. Almost a steal. It is a steal. Here comes Bertram the other way, and she almost lost it. Bertram with it, dropped it back. Open three, bounce, oh. no, rebound. Comes down to Titer. Titer gets her ninth board of the game. Little Can't. hesitation on that three. I think had she had just pulled the trigger, it might have gone right in. But I think she saw a UT player out of the corner of her eye, and it made her hesitate. Here is a shoe, and they foul her. Got to be careful on that, because that almost looked like an intentional foul. Yeah, I know did. it was, but you don't want to make it look like it exactly. is. Exactly. <laughs> you got to try to go for the ball. You don't try to go for the ball, you could get that call. And, of course, Lee doesn't need that right now. So a shoe will shoot two. Spartans have been in the bonus here in the fourth quarter for a while. And once again, Mrs. Shu comes through. She's two of three here in the quarter. Once again, the big switches. Cheeks come, comes back in here now. One more coming up. Spartans by 12. And boy, if you're Tampa, you got to be feeling pretty good right now. Absolutely. Time ticking down to 119. It's going to go below one here really soon. And See what Lee can do. Another good free throw by a Shu. It's got to be a quick. Points. It's got to be a quick hit here, Lee. This is Bertram, goes in, missed the shot, rebound Nodge. Nodge for Nelson, and they're going to have to start fouling here. Nelson is fouled, and she will shoot a couple, and Nelson and Nelson, I think, clipped Schubert there a little bit. Yeah, she got hit right in the face. So a couple of free throws coming up here, and we are, as you can see, ticking down to one minute to go. The fifth-seeded Tampa Spartans look like they're going to win it, so there'll be two upsets today, both by Sunshine State Conference schools. Well, we talked about how strong our league really is, yep. right? The league well, here? Well, you know, but I said it was a top-heavy league for the Gulf South Conference, and That's two true. of their three teams are going to lose That's right. here tonight. So it does say how good our conference really has been this year. A couple of free throws there. Boy, the Spartans are just about wrapping this thing up. I remember when I was coaching in this conference, there was never hardly ever an easy night. Lee's nice. jumper, or Bertram's jumper is good, and it will be the final timeout called here by Marty Rowe. Just a little less than a minute to go. The, Mo the uh, Spartans with a 13-point lead. I was going to say Mox. They're going to play tomorrow night here, and that's going to be fun. You know, this, this is a long-standing rival. I don't, know, <laughs> I don't know which one is the Mox bigger rivalry, whether it's Rollins or Tampa. I think it's close either way. They're on different sides of the state. They kind of meet here in Lakeland. But they have played the Spartans a whole bunch of times down through the years, and there have been some classic games Absolutely. between these two teams. Absolutely. I mean, when I was coaching both on the men's and the women's side, those rivalries and those games between Florida Southern were just unbelievable. And we see Mox head coach Betsy Harris. She's been here scouting this whole game. And I'm sure she's going to go probably stay up, stay up tonight, try to figure out how they're going to stop Dory Naj. It's not you tighter. And what they're going to do about Chris Nelson, because Chris Nelson has played really well. She's played very well. And you Great know, the, effort. It was it a steal? Let's see. Uh, no, but almost. And those two teams know each other like the back of their hand. That's the thing. Yep. Nothing, yep. nothing new is going to happen. Nope, that's true. <laughs> that's true. I guess, I guess you could look at it and say whoever plays better is probably going to win it. Mm -hmm. And then we will have Nova playing West Florida. West Florida will be the lone remaining team from the Gulf South Conference still in the tournament. And boy, did they look good today against Eckerd. There's a foul. The shoe goes down hard. And the foul is going to be called on Roddy, who will pick up her third foul in the contest. So a couple of free throws back the other way. I have to check that. That's four, actually, on Roddy. So a couple of free throws back the other way here in the Spartans are pretty close to starting to celebrate here. Mm -hmm. And we just talked about that Florida Southern UT as well. You know, we talk about some of the players like the Chris Nelson today for UT, how great she played today. 
And then I look back at the Florida Southern game prior to this, and it was Chesney Campbell that played yep. so well in that game. So it could be interesting where you get players like that that aren't your main ones that are going to step up and maybe have the big game and put their team over the top. Lentz out and cheeks in for Lee. One more here for a shoe. It's a 14-point Spartan lead. Haley Schubert bringing it up. She's got three more years for this Lee Flames team. And boy, how good will she be in three years? Look at her play. Look how hard she goes at it. She has not been able to get things to fall here very much tonight. They're going to get a, a double dribble, it looks like. They're going to give Lee the ball back here. She hasn't been able to get things to fall, but, boy, she has been relentless the whole night. Absolutely. I mean, she's four for 17 right now, but she has never stopped hustling. So they got to do some mop-up duty here. Don't want to get anybody hurt in the final 37.3 seconds. Again, stay tuned for our post-game show, and don't forget the press conferences for both teams will come up here, and then we will wrap it up, and we'll see you tomorrow night here. And it should be an interesting night here. Nova and West Florida, and Florida Southern and Tampa. This is Bertram, and she will nice. shoot a free throw coming up. Boy, Abby Bertram. You can see why she was the conference tournament MVP for Lee. Well, and one of the things that she has in her pocket is that she can stop on a dime and elevate, and that's really, really hard to guard in the women's game. Jenna Scoggins in, Tori Lentz in, Anna Woodford in. Scoggins in for the first time now for Lee. So Marty Rowe getting all of his players in, give him a chance here. And one free throw for Abby Bertram, who has 24 points tonight. Trying to make it 25, get her club just a little bit closer. But time, obviously, is pretty much gone. And she gets the roll. 25 big ones for Abby Bertram. 11 of 24 from the floor. She hits her first free throw. Is that really right? Yeah, it is. How about that? That is As her many first. Times, yeah, 24 shots. She's made one free throw. That's only wow. taken one. Again, the, what does that say? She's a jump shooter. Absolutely. Yep. Yeah, yeah. So both teams talking it over in this final 30-second timeout. And, boy, for Tom Jesse, he's got to be feeling pretty good right now. Yeah, he was worried going into this game when I did talk to him because he talked about, you know, Lee and how hard they play and how relentless they are and they're very patient on their offense. And we saw Lee put up a lot of shots early, but they didn't fall for them. Yeah, Lee right now is going to wind up shooting one-third tonight. 72 shots, they've made 24. Wow. So Titer will inbound it. And Schubert, rather, instead it will be Bodges who will guard it. Nelson saves it. This is a shoe. She's getting slapped around a little <laughs> bit. And she's going to hold it. And let's see if they just let it go here. I don't know. There's a three-second difference between shot and game. And it looks like they're going to let it go here. And the Tampa Spartans are going to pull our second upset of the four quarterfinal games. Ticking down, it goes. Tampa will turn the ball over, and that's probably the best turnover they've had the entire game. <laughs> well, I look at the number of shots, and we just talked about that. Lee has probably taken almost, what, 30 more shots yeah, yeah. than Tampa in this game? Let's see if Scoggins can get a shot off to end the game. She'll go down. She will score. She will get the bucket here for Lee. Jenna Scoggins just came into the game, and that will do it. The University of Tampa Spartans have pulled off a big one. They knock off Lee by a 72 to 63 count. Lee actually outscores the Spartans 22 to 18 in the fourth quarter, but the Spartans will move on and they will play tomorrow night here at 7.30 against the Florida Southern College Mucks. And we are gonna go ahead and step aside, take a break, come back with our post game show. You have been watching the quarterfinals of the 2019 NCAA Division II Women's South Regional Basketball Tournament right here on the Sunshine State Conference Digital Network. I was told the place I was looking for didn't exist. A place that could refine my raw talents into something greater. Where I could ask big questions about my faith, not settling for easy answers. And I could risk what's comfortable in pursuit of my dream. 
to join with others, find my voice, and change the world. I was told that place didn't exist. Then I found Lee. This is the University of Tampa. Explore your dreams, discover your talents, get ready to invent, innovate, and be a leader. This is the University of Tampa. From court to court and lane, to lane under the lights or under the sun, no one delivers Division II sports like NCAA.com. The center of D2 is inside the NCAA.com hub. With exclusive highlights of every sport and live broadcasts of every Division II championship found nowhere else. Make NCAA.com yours. The home of Division II. Welcome back to the Streamline Sale Arena here inside the Jenkins Fieldhouse. The University of Tampa Spartans are moving on to play in the semifinals here of the 2019 NCAA Division II Women's South Regional Tournament. There's our final numbers for tonight. Boy, Tampa shoots 60% from the floor. Lee only 34, but what a disparity in number of shots. 73 for Lee, 45 for Tampa. Wow. Yeah, Lee definitely was putting shots up early, and some of those shots were not going in, and it just, that offensive struggle continued all the way into the second half. And like you said, it's going to be hard to win a game when you're shooting 34% and the other team is shooting 60. Yeah, Tampa had a 31-25 lead at the half and then wound up outscoring Lee 41-38 to in the second half as things opened up a little bit. Tampa also won the rebounding battle 37 37- to 34 mm -hmm. and how about points off turnovers that's about the only place that lee did a really nice job you know tampa wins the game by 11 they still have 19 turnovers that led that lee turned into 18 points in the game you, you wonder how that can happen but some of that has to do now with the shot disparity here absolutely and you know you go downstairs and you talk in the locker room and you're lee and you've got a lot of young kids and you played a Tampa team that had a lot of transfers, a lot of older players. And if I were the coach, I would just tell them, you know what, if we had shots that fell tonight, it would be a different story. Well, Tampa had four in double figures led by Dory Nod. She had 21 on 9 of 12 from the floor, 3 of 3 at the line. She also had 12, 12 rebounds. rebounds in 36 minutes on the floor. Titer with 16 points. She shot it well, 8 of 13 from the field. She also contributed nine rebounds and played only 30 minutes. She missed 10 minutes in the first half because of foul trouble. And how about Chris Nelson? 14 points, four of six from the floor, one of two from three, five of eight at the line. She gets six rebounds, and it's surprising to me. She has no assists, and she played the entire game. That just a shocker. Well, I think... As far as she goes, as far as assists go, she really just runs the offense. You know, she gets them into their own offense. She makes the initial pass into the offense. She did a phenomenal job. She averages four points a game. Yep. And in this game, she had 14. And those are the kids that we talk about when you come into these tournaments like this. You're going to have your normal scores. But when you have somebody like a Nelson or somebody like a Chesney Campbell that comes in and really does a tremendous job for their teams, kind of puts them over the top. Emily Eshu with 10 points for the Spartans. On the other side, Abby Bertram with 25. Bodges with 11. Schubert with 11. Schubert only 4 of 18 from the floor. Well, that's going to wrap it up for us here tonight. There's the bracket. That's what it's going to look like tomorrow. The 5 o'clock game will be West Florida and Nova. The 7.30 game will be the top-seeded Florida Southern College mocks against the Tampa Spartans. My thanks to my broadcast partner, Lisa Beamer. Look forward to working with you again tomorrow. Got two more coming up. And also to Will Fizakerly, our producer, director, and everything else. To our camera people, Ariel, Kent, George, Mimi, who's still here. Oh, there she is. She's still around. <laughs> to thanks to all of you. And most of all, thanks to you for watching and listening here on this long day of quarterfinal basketball. We'll be back on the air a few minutes before 5 o'clock tomorrow. We invite you to join us then. It will be Nova against West Florida at 5, Tampa and Florida Southern at 7.30. I'm Jim Henderson. We'll talk to you tomorrow night. Take care, everyone.